Hello and welcome to ACIT. My name is Rohit Pardasani and I am going to be your instructor for CCIE security. I have four CCIEs, one in route switch, in service provider, in security and in collaboration. I am also a Cisco certified systems instructor and today we would be learning failover. All right, so uh, let's configure failover. I have two ASAs here, ASA1 and ASA2. ASA2 is completely blank right now, but ASA1 has been pre-configured. I am running the mode as multiple and my configuration has been pre-configured. So I have two contacts created I have contacts admin, which is also my admin contacts, and I have contacts ACIT, and two interfaces have been allocated. Now before we configure failover, there are some prerequisites that you should do when you go into your lab exam. The first thing that you should do is verify your switching configuration. This means that wherever ASA1 connects, Whatever is on your switch side, the same configuration should be for your ASA2. This means if ASA1 inside interface on the switch side is an access port in let's say VLAN 10, then ASA2 inside should also be an access port and should be in VLAN 10. I have already configured the switch side correctly. So let's move ahead and configure failover. In my configuration, I would use ASA1 as the primary ASA and ASA2 is going to be secondary. We would be configuring active-active. However, I highly recommend that before you do active-active, you should configure active standby, let your replication happen. And once your replication has been done, then you can always switch over to active-active. So uh, let's go ahead and configure failover. All right, so to configure failover, the first step would be to define which interface would be used for failover. We would be using interface E0 by 3. So the only thing we need on this interface would be a no shot. My next step would be to define this ASA as the primary ASA. So failover LAN unit primary. The next thing I need to do is define which interface I'm using for failover. So failover LAN interface, any name to the interface. So let's say F over and the interface used for failover would be Ethernet 0 by 3. The next step would be to configure stateful failover. If you want your connections to be replicated, then you need to configure the failover with the command failover link f over ethernet 0 by 3. So I am using the same interface for stateful connection as well. So all my replication of my connections would happen over the same link. The next step would be to configure an IP address to the failover interface. So failover interface IP F over. Let's use the IP address 123.0.0.1 255 255.0. And the standby IP address for the failover link would be 123.0.0.2. The last step would be to enable the failover service. So the command would be failover. Once we have configured all the commands on the primary ASA, the next step would be to go to the secondary ASA and configure all these commands there as well. Let's have a look at um, my secondary ASA. Now on my secondary ASA, before we configure any failover, we should verify a few things. The first step should be, is the secondary ASA running the same mode as the primary ASA? Now my primary ASA was running 
multiple mode so my secondary ASS should also be running exactly the same mode let's do a show mode to verify if I am running the same mode as the primary ASA the next step would be to enable my failover interface so interface e0 by 3 no shot now we need to configure the same commands like we did on the primary ASA on my secondary ASA however there's a quick way of doing it just go back to your primary ASA to a show run failover and copy the last three commands so I would copy failover land, failover link and the failover interface command. Go back to your secondary ASA and paste these three commands there. The next step would be to enable failover land, unit secondary and lastly activate the failover service. Now if I go back to my primary ASA and do a show failover, you would notice that this host is the primary ASA and he is active and he is active for both the contacts, admin and ACIT. The secondary device is standby and you do not have any IP address configured. So 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 indicates that you do not have any IP address configured for the standby. So let's quickly go and configure the standby IP address as well. Now, since we have active standby right now, all your configuration, you have to do it only on the primary ASA. So on the primary ASA, you go inside the contacts, so change to contacts, admin, Inside this, you would give show run interface. Just copy the IP address. Interface E0 by 2 and standby 10.0.0.2. You would do exactly the same thing for the second contacts, which was ACIT. Do a show run interface. Copy your IP address again and give the standby address as 74.002 similarly for interface E0 by 1 standby 192.168.0.2 now that we have configured my standby addresses as well if I go back to my system and do a show failover you would notice that I have all the active IP addresses on my primary ASA and all the standby IP addresses on my secondary ASA normal is good waiting is not good if the waiting does not go after two or three minutes, it usually indicates that there's a VLAN problem, maybe ASA1 or ASA2, wherever they connect on the switch side, they're not in the same VLAN. So typically if your VLAN configuration or your switch side configuration is correct, then it should not be a problem. Let's wait and watch. Let's do a show failover again. And now I do not have any waiting and all the interfaces are monitored. Now that I have configured active standby failover, I can switch to active active. So let's switch to active active. Now to do active active, I really recommend that you do exactly how I do it. So go to your secondary ASA first. So your secondary one first and give the command no failover so that your failover stops on your secondary ASA first. Then go back to your primary ASA and do a no failover and now create two failover groups on the primary ASA. So you disable the failover on the secondary first, then you disable on the primary and then you say on the primary failover group one, you should do the preem because there is no preemption in failover and make group one as primary and one more failover group two preempt 
and make this one as secondary. Now go back to your contacts, admin, and say join failover group one, and inside the contacts ACIT, join the failover group two. The next step would be to activate failover again. Now for activating failover, you would do this only on the primary ASA. You do not need to activate failover on the secondary ASA. The primary ASA would activate the failover on the secondary. So let's just do a failover on the primary ASA. And let's do a write mem all as well. Now if I do a show failover on the primary ASA, you would notice that the primary ASA is primary on the whole, but for group one, he's active and for group two, he's standby. Since he is standby for group two, the standby IP address is here and the secondary device, which was ASA2, is primary or active for group two and standby for group one. I hope this video was informative to you and thank you for viewing.